In the boundless void between stars, Voyager 1 drifts alone, silent, ancient, and yet very much alive. For over four decades, this humble spacecraft has ventured farther than anything humanity has ever built. But just when scientists thought they had a firm grasp on its trajectory, on its status, on its future, Voyager 1 sent something back. A signal. But not just any signal. A transmission so bizarre, so unexpected, and so deeply unexplainable, that it has rattled even the most seasoned space scientists at NASA. What could possibly be hiding in the cold dark beyond the heliopause? Could it be a simple malfunction? Or something far more profound? Stay with us, because what Voyager 1 just sent from the edge of interstellar space might change everything we thought we knew about the universe. Launched in 1977, Voyager 1 was designed for a relatively modest mission. Explore Jupiter and Saturn, send back some pictures, and gracefully fade into the coldness of space. But against all odds, it refused to die. With its 3.7-meter radio dish and plutonium-powered heart, Voyager kept moving, outliving its original purpose and continuing its mission far beyond the planets. It now drifts more than 22 billion kilometers away from Earth, deeper into interstellar space than any machine before it. And though it's been decades since its last planetary flyby, it's still talking to us, sending whispers from the void. But no one could have predicted what came next. In May of last year, scientists at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory noticed something strange. The Attitude Articulation and Control System, or AACS, which keeps Voyager's antenna pointed precisely at Earth, began sending scrambled data. It wasn't just an error, it was incomprehensible. Telemetry data was being routed through an onboard computer that had been declared dead for years. Even more bizarre, Voyager 1 was clearly still pointing at Earth. The signal was strong, the instruments were stable, and the science data kept flowing in as if nothing was wrong. It was as if the spacecraft had suffered a stroke, but continued speaking, fluently and perfectly, through another channel. Was this just a fluke, a cosmic hiccup, or something far more significant? Engineers worked tirelessly to solve the mystery. Eventually, they succeeded. They redirected the AACS to send its data through the correct computer, and the garbled transmission stopped. But the deeper question remains unanswered. Why did it happen in the first place? No one at NASA had ever commanded the system to reroute itself. There had been no solar flare, no hardware failure, no meteorite impact. And yet something, something, had triggered this change. Some speculate a bit flip from cosmic radiation, Others wonder if a decaying part of the spacecraft's internal logic had sparked an automated failsafe that misfired. But a growing number of scientists are now openly wondering if Voyager encountered something out there, something we weren't prepared for. Since the fix, Voyager has remained stable, but many experts aren't ready to breathe easy. The glitch, while resolved, has left a lingering discomfort. Why didn't the fault protection systems activate? How did a dead computer come back to life? And perhaps most unsettling of all, could this have been a reaction, not to internal failure, but to an external stimulus? Voyager 1 is no longer in the heliosphere. It's out there in raw interstellar space, navigating through cosmic rays, magnetic fields, and possibly unknown phenomena. Is it possible the spacecraft interacted with a structure, an anomaly, or an environment we've never encountered before? The data packet that triggered the whole event has been archived. It's still being reviewed. And some early indicators suggest fluctuations that don't align with natural patterns. Something triggered Voyager, and that something might still be out there. Weeks after the initial glitch, Voyager 1 began transmitting a new set of data from its plasma wave instrument. Nothing unusual at first glance, until analysts noticed an irregular spike a pulse in the readings that appeared like a heartbeat. It pulsed once, then again, then vanished. Scientists cross-checked the data with solar activity and cosmic ray interference. Nothing matched. The signal had a rhythm, brief, consistent, and impossible to attribute to anything known. When they tried to trace the source back through the raw telemetry, it was as if the spike had never been there, like a dream that vanishes upon waking. 
Some researchers described it as a phantom event, one that left no residue, but felt undeniably real. The idea began to spread. What if Voyager hadn't just sent an error? What if it had encountered something that erased itself? What followed was an obsessive combing through every kilobyte of data Voyager 1 had transmitted since the incident. Not just the obvious science readings, but the background noise, the hum, the static, the fluctuations in electromagnetic interference. What they found was subtle. Embedded deep in the carrier signal were micro-patterns, harmonics, rhythmic sequences, near-perfect repetitions, too consistent to be random, too faint to be easily decoded. One NASA engineer, who had worked on the mission since the 80s, reportedly said, It's like something is knocking from the other side of a wall we didn't know was there. Attempts to decode the patterns are ongoing, with some teams feeding the sequences into AI models designed to find structure in chaos. And according to early leaks, the models are responding. They recognize syntax. They detect structure. As if this was never just noise at all, but a message. For decades, Voyager's golden record has symbolized humanity's attempt to say, we are here to the cosmos. But what happens when the cosmos talks back? NASA's contact protocols, largely theoretical, are designed for unmistakable alien communication, clear math, coded primes, universal physics. But what Voyager 1 has triggered doesn't fit that script. It's not a conversation. It's a glitch, a shadow, an echo. Yet it's happening in real time. This has forced mission directors to revisit old documents from SETI, from Project Ozma, even from the Drake Equation debates. They're asking, what counts as first contact? Does it have to be a language? Or can it begin with a malfunction, one that points to something watching? If Voyager encountered something, and that something responded in a way that affected its systems, then humanity might already be in a conversation we don't even recognize as such. Then comes the most unsettling question of all. If this transmission is real, if Voyager didn't just break, but was changed, what does it mean for the rest of space? Could other probes encounter the same? Could humans, as we push farther out, run into whatever this is? And is the silence that followed a message in itself? The last bursts of strange data have tapered off. The plasma readings have normalized. The phantom pulses have gone quiet. Voyager is once again operating normally. But many now wonder, was that the real anomaly, the silence? One physicist put it this way, sometimes the loudest scream is the one that stops suddenly. As the scientific world waits for the next strange ping from interstellar space, there's a growing sense that something is watching. That Voyager didn't just encounter the unknown, but crossed a threshold we didn't even know existed. So now we stand at the edge of something unimaginable. A spacecraft launched before the internet existed, older than many of the scientists interpreting its data today, has returned with a whisper from the void. A transmission that wasn't supposed to happen, routed through systems long thought dead, carrying fragments of patterns that defy natural explanation. It's not just the mystery of what Voyager 1 encountered, it's the implications. Because if this signal was triggered by something out there, something intelligent, structured, reactive, then the silence we've come to accept from the stars may not have been silence at all. It may have been patience. Voyager 1 might not be just a relic of the past. It might be our first ambassador, or our first witness. A witness to something so vast, so incomprehensible, that it chose to reveal itself not in words, not in lights, but in the one place we'd least expect it. A technical anomaly, a ghost in the circuitry, a breath in the data. And now the question isn't whether we're alone, but whether someone, or something, just acknowledged our presence in the dark. If this was their first reply, what happens when they decide to speak louder?